Hey SOP people, in today's video I'm going to remove the transfer case on this car in order to fix the leaking transmission seal that goes to the transfer case. Just for reference, this here is the transfer case and right here where it's all wet you can see that it's leaking up in between the transmission and the transfer case. First step is to remove the passenger wheel. The next step is to drop the bottom control arm by removing this nut and this bolt. For reference, that's a 16 millimeter on one side and an E14 on the other. Now we're gonna go ahead and pry it out. Now that that's removed, you can go ahead and tug on this real hard and you should be able to remove your axle here. Now the axle's out. The next thing we need to do is go ahead and remove the downpipe. Mine is stainless from Genuine Saab, so it's gonna be a little easier to remove, especially because I don't have the two mounts back here, so you'll have to undo both of those as well. But once that's done, the downpipe should just hang. Uh, you can set it on a stand or something so that it doesn't uh, break your flex pipe here. The next step is to remove these three bolts from this bracket. There's one here, one here, and one right here. Now the problem is with this one, the alternator actually sits in the way. So what you can do to counteract this is take out this alternator bolt, remove your pulley, or remove your serpentine belt, and then use a uh, pry bar to pull the alternator out of the way and you'll have access to that bolt. Or you can stress yourself and fit a wrench in there and move it a quarter turn at a time. I'll show you how to do it the easy way. So I've already loosened this alternator bolt here. We're gonna take it the rest of the way out. Just like that. So if you pull this plastic out of the way, you can see up inside right there, there's a square hole. And you need to put a half inch breaker bar in there to pull your tensioner. With your breaker bar and the tensioner, go ahead and pull it. And remove your belt from the alternator pulley. And you can actually leave the breaker bar in the tensioner until you're done the job. So now I'm going to grab a pry bar. Go ahead and pull. Just like that. As you can see, you can now just barely fit a 13 millimeter onto the bolt here. This one up here and this one down here. Next, you're gonna to need to remove your drive shaft and remove all of your carrier bolts and nuts here. There's four of them, one on each side. Mine are a little different, so I didn't show them on video. And once you've done that, you can take a pry bar and uh, start to pull back on this here. And it will eventually wiggle out um, with some pulling. Now, what you can do to make this somewhat easier is take it out of the rear diff over there using a bunch of uh, regular Torx bolts, but it is possible to pull this uh, by just releasing the carrier bearings here. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, I do recommend that you remove it from the rear diff, but as far as time goes, I'm gonna risk doing it like this because I've gotten it before. Uh, you do risk damage to your carrier uh, bushings though by doing this, so be careful. Once you have it this far out, that's pretty much close enough, and uh, the rest will fall out on its own when we get closer. Up and in, up and inside here, there's an engine mount back here. You'll have to undo that E18 dead center of the screen on the middle of the mount first. Once you've completed that, you can remove these two bolts and this bolt here to get that mount out of the way. Go ahead and loosen your rear subframe bolts. You can also loosen the front ones just a hair. Once you have your drive shaft off, the bolt's out, and your bolt out in the center up there, and you've also lowered your rear subframe and gently loosened up the front of the subframe, you can now reach in here and remove this transfer case engine mount. Now what you're gonna do is take out this rear mount here. And a good way to access that is through the tunnel right here. With a swivel, you can get to the bolts over these power steering lines. Now that we have this mount out of the way, we can go ahead and take care of 
all the rest of the E18 bolts. This one, this one, and this one. So these three up here, and then there's one down the center of this shaft. And once you have those three out, I believe that this transfer case just pulls right off. Next thing to take care of is going ahead and draining your transmission because transmission oil is going to come out when you take off your transfer case. Now this coloring here is exactly why I change my gear oil every 25,000 miles-ish. So this will be my uh, second transmission fluid full change on this car. Uh, obviously I haven't been doing it uh, super, super often because I've had it leaking anyway, but uh, now I can go ahead and get this thing back on track. You can gently pry between the transmission here and the transfer case here. But like I said, very gently, because you don't want to break your casing or anything like that. But you should not have to force this. It should be coming free. I'm barely, barely pushing. I can move this with two fingers on the breaker bar. I'm pushing with my thumb and one finger and it's coming loose. And that's exactly what you wanna see. Have a second person here to help you or have a transmission table for this to lay on while you're taking it off. Fresh seal is on, wet it with some oil all the way around, some gear oil that is. When reinstalling your transfer case on the transmission, make sure it's level so you don't slice the seal open. Next, put in your three top bolts first up here, then put in your center bolt here. You can then put on this rear bracket with its three bolts. Now tighten down the five bolts to this bracket, the three going in front, and then the two going in on the side that I showed last. Now put in your rear engine mount, but make sure when you put it in and twist it, and then put the bolts in on the bottom, do not sever your power steering lines. It's very easy for them to get stuck underneath. Put in your center bolt first, and then tighten down the three under the subframe in the back. But again, make sure your power steering lines are not pinched between the subframe and the bottom of that mount. You actually want them behind it and not under it either. Next, reinstall your drive shaft into the transfer case just like so. And if it has trouble going in, try twisting it a little bit. Now go ahead and rotate down your alternator. You might need a pry bar to get it back down. And then put in the bolt. Now go ahead and put your serpentine belt back over the pulley. Now work on reinstalling your axle. This is your CV axle. If it has trouble going back in, again, twist it just like the drive shaft in the center. My phone died in the middle of the process, but just follow the steps uh, in reverse order. Something I highly recommend is also changing fluid. Um, I use AC Delco uh, Blue, I believe it's called Auto Track 2 or something like that, uh, transfer case fluid. Um, the fill hole, there's the uh, eight millimeter uh, bolt right there. It's an Allen key. Here's the drain. Drain it here and with the exhaust off, uh, fill it here until it starts leaking out and then put the bolt back in. Make sure everything's tight and uh, then you're done with the transfer case but because you drained the transmission you're gonna have to refill that as well so i'll go ahead and show you how to do that remove your battery and your battery box the battery box is simple it's just a bunch of torx bolts in the bottom Now disconnect this ground cable that's in the way. With the ground cable out of the way over here, you'll be able to see your eight millimeter fill plug. According to WIS, this takes 75 W90, and it also takes about 1.6 liters of fluid to 1.8 liters of fluid. 
fill plug has a very fine thread. Make sure you put it on by hand all the way in first and then just tighten it down with the eight millimeter. When you're done, reinstall the battery box and the battery and don't forget to check WIS to make sure that you've done every step correctly and follow the tightening torques. Thanks so much for watching the video. I'll catch you in the next one.